Mary Snooze must have sounded like an April Fool's joke to Simon Peter and the other disciple. A very inappropriate April Fool's joke. Mary had just arrived breathlessly announcing that grave robbers had, had been at work in the garden where Jesus had been buried because the very stone that she had seen placed in front of the tomb was now rolled away. And so without so much as a word, Peter and the other disciple set out to see for themselves. And after they arrived, Peter stepped into the tomb followed by the other disciple and looking around, they found it to be empty except for linen wrappings that had been used to dress the body of Jesus. The gospel writer doesn't tell us what it must have been like for these two disciples to find an empty tomb. All we know for sure is that the unnamed disciple believed, which seems to imply that Peter didn't. One believed, the other didn't, but both of them returned to their homes and their everyday lives. Which may seem pretty anticlimactic to the reader, maybe even sad. It seems as if Peter's and the other disciples' shroud of grief and disappointment weighed so heavily upon them, it so overwhelmingly suffocated their spirits that it overshadowed everything for the two men. They were so devastated by the recent events of Jesus' death and now this empty tomb that all they could manage to do was to stumble back to their homes. That was their experience of the resurrection. A very different experience than Mary's. Because when Mary entered the tomb, she saw more than just an empty grave and some neatly rolled up linen wrappings. She saw angels. And if that wasn't enough to make the head spin, she encountered Jesus too in what appeared to be just a common, ordinary, everyday gardener. Just someone whose job it was to keep the shrubs trimmed and the weeds pulled. Even though she, he didn't look very special, she recognized Jesus in him when, he, when she heard him call her name to which she responded with Rabboni, which means rabbi or teacher. So what's it like for us? I wonder if our experience of the resurrection is more often closer to that of Simon Peter and the other disciple than to Mary. Peter and the other disciple were unable to see anything but an empty tomb because they couldn't let go of their image and expectations of Jesus. He was supposed to have been the victorious Messiah who would lead the rebellion against the Roman Empire. Instead, they had watched him suffer and die. And all their hopes and dreams had been buried right along with him in a tomb that had now apparently been desecrated. There was nothing left to do but to return to their homes and their everyday routines. Sometimes I think we Christians are like Peter and the other disciple. Like these two followers, we too have our own ideas of who Jesus is and who he is not. We have painted an image of a Jesus whose values aren't countercultural at all. Values that don't challenge us, but instead assure us that everything we believe, everything we've been taught, everything we understand about Jesus is true. But we aren't devastated like these two disciples because unlike them, we know how the story ends. In fact, we've heard the ending to the story so often, we wind up responding to the resurrection in the same way as the unnamed disciple. We believe, but our faith is not one that compels us to do anything except to return to our homes and the everyday routines of our lives. We have not been transformed by the news of the re resurrection, nor have we stuck around long enough to encounter the Christ. And in the re-embracing of our daily schedules, timetables, and agendas, 
we deny the resurrection. In the words of Peter Rollins, I deny the resurrection of Christ every time I do not serve at the feet of the oppressed. Each day I turn my back on the poor. I deny the resurrection of Christ when I close my ears to the cries of the downtrodden and lend my support to an unjust and corrupt system. If we're honest with ourselves more times than not, that is our experience of the resurrection. One closer to Peter's and the other disciples than to Mary's. But sometimes, sometimes it's a different story altogether. Sometimes we see Jesus. Not the Jesus we were expecting. Not a Jesus who looks like us, votes like us, or makes the same salary as we do. And not a Jesus who is a best-selling author or preaches to a packed stadium. But a Jesus who is found in the common, ordinary encounters of everyday life. A gardener. The grocery clerk. A trash collector. You'll find Jesus in the hospital waiting room among family members anxiously awaiting the news from the surgeon. You'll find, you'll find him on the sidewalk in the, in the person asking for a handout. You'll encounter Christ in the toddler who hasn't yet learned the words to express their needs and the aging adult who has begun to lose their grasp on those words. You'll encounter Jesus in the common, ordinary stuff of life, but only if you sn slow down long enough to see the needs of those around you. In our story, when Mary hears her name, she recognizes the true identity of Jesus. But in the same instant, she also claims her own identity. By calling him Rabboni, she was laying claim to her identity as one of Jesus' disciples. And that's what the resurrection does. It's not just a proclamation about the risen Christ, but a transformation of our perspective of who we are and who God is calling us to be. It's in this encounter that we begin to realize that we are in fact God's own beloved children. And not only us, but other folks too. And in that moment of revelation, when we encounter Christ in everyday life, we can join with Mary in proclaiming that I have seen the Lord. It's no longer the third person perspective of Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, but instead it's a gloriously personal witness and testimony and it becomes our own five-word sermon. I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord not in the triumphant display of power and greatness, but instead in the drunkard on the street. I have seen the Lord not in a five-star restaurant, but in the downtown soup kitchen. I have seen the Lord not in the certainty of doctrines that I have grown up with, but in a search for the truth that some call heresy, which is fine with me because they said the same thing about Jesus. And every time I see him in the common, ordinary stuff of life, I affirm the resurrection. Once again, in the words of Peter Rollins, I affirm it when I stand up for those who are forced to live on their knees, when I speak for those who had their tongues torn out, when I cry for those who have no more tears left to shed. I have seen the Lord, and He has called my name not once, but over and over. Every time I open myself to the needs of my neighbor, I experience the resurrection. I participate in the transformation of death into life. The significance of the resurrection is about so much more than Jesus' appearance to Mary. Its real significance is found in his appearance to you and me today.
and in how he, we respond to him when we recognize him in the face of others. May we recognize Jesus in our neighbors. And may we respond to their needs because in so doing, we affirm that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Amen.